When we come back, let's take a look at the 8-channel QCAM NVR security system from Ancrest. Welcome back guys. For many years, security cameras have relied on analog to transmit video to their DVR. Their cable of choice? Why, the trusty coaxial with the BNC connector. Recently though, a new method has surfaced, and that's an MVR system that rely on your standard RJ45 Ethernet cable. Some of these MVR are even capable of transmitting power over the Ethernet wire to the camera, and that's exactly what this unit does. It's an MVR system that uses an RJ45 cord to transmit data and power to and from the camera. So this system is already up and running and here are my thoughts. The system is well built. Both the camera and MVR have a solid build quality to them that makes them feel tough. The cameras have a decent weight to them and are housed in a metal housing. This both ensures that the camera is completely protected from the outside elements, while the weight keeps the camera stable if it's mounted somewhere unstable such as the bottom of your soffit. The infrared light provides adequate lighting approximately 65 feet in the darkest area of your home. Each camera supports PoE, so one cable is all you need, but keep in mind your NVR also needs to support POE if you buy the cameras and NVR separately. And yes, they are IP cameras so you technically don't even need an NVR unit. Each camera also has a mic which allows you to record sound and listen in through live feed. Many people are completely freaked out when I mention it. But hey, for me, the mic is a huge plus. When live view mode, this is what you need really good and all the sound. So check upstairs whatever monitor you have for the DVR. Granted, that you have audio connection tips. So I would suggest using an HDMI. Now let's now let me just walk around the center of my own thing to see uh, how this camera system captures motion. Where was I? Oh yes. Each camera has a resolution of 1080p which records at 25 frames per second. Most cameras typically record around 30 frames per second, but at 25 frames per second, the difference is minute. Each camera has a metal hood to keep the sun out of the lens, and colors are pretty accurate to the naked eye. The video quality is amazing in the day. Night, mm, not so much. You see fine, but if your subject moves, ghosting is visible. If you pause the video to take a snapshot, you won't be able to make out the suspect. If you are coming from a system that uses 960H or even 720P, the quality with this MVR shows a huge difference. There's no comparison. Although more data can be transmitted with an Ethernet setup, quality is on par with a 1080P AHD coaxial setup, at least in my opinion. Each camera supports motion detection, but it's very difficult to test and configure unlike some other systems I configured. And the reason is because this unit gives you so much more manual control over the motion detection unlike most systems. For example, you can fine tune the motion detection from 1 to 100, 1 being very sensitive and 100 being not so sensitive. With that much leeway, you can fine tune it to exactly the way you want, although I found setting 20 to 100 to yield the same results. You can even set different motion settings for different time frames, an excellent option if you want less or more sensitivity at night or day. Each camera has an image quality of 2 megapixel and can either work solo or with an MVR as mentioned earlier. Which means you can use it with an Onvibs compatible NVR or use an Onvibs compatible camera with this NVR. And they have a 90 degree viewing angle so you can capture more real estate. Installation is a breeze and they do work with cheap copper clad aluminum cables if you make your own. I used both the included cables and CCA and found no difference between the two in terms of latency and image quality. Power over Ethernet also works with my CCA cables. The MVR gives you neat features like the ability to trigger a certain set of cameras if one of them detects motion. So for example, I have three cameras facing the front of my house in all directions. If one senses a car driving by, all three will start recording simultaneously. Reason why you would do this is to make sure all your cameras start recording if there is movement. So you won't be disappointed if you need a certain angle, but that camera failed to start recording due to lack of motion.
And real quick, let's just take a look at a test run around my house. So, as mentioned before, the camera and NVR support OnViv, so you can add OnViv supported IP cameras to this NVR and have it handle recordings. You get access to the QCam mobile app and their PC and Mac software. The Mac and PC software lets you configure your NVR settings, but it's flaky. Sometimes the settings save, most times they don't, and you have to go in and make the setting change on the NVR itself. Downloading videos using the PC Mac software isn't too bad either. However, if you have the software converting the video to AVI then downloading, you'll end up with a video only 3 seconds long. It has to be a glitch with their software. If you don't convert and just download the H.264 video, then make sure you have VLC installed and configured for H.264. Once you do that, it should work. However, it is faster to just use the NVR itself to save videos. The NVR will automatically save it to your flash drive in AVI format, and the NVR will also allow you to save up to 4 channels at once. But every now and then you might end up with a corrupted video file. Just dust yourself off and try again. But all good things must come to an end, and this system is far from perfect. This system has a couple of big drawbacks. The latency for each channel is ridiculous. Some channels are in sync, but others have a huge delay. We're talking like 4, 5, sometimes 9 second delay. It's not all the time, and every channel experiences the problem every now and then. I thought it was the CCA cables I used, but then I noticed that the cameras using the included standard cables were doing the same exact thing. Sometimes a car will drop by two cameras, the first camera will show fine, but the second one won't show the car until 5 seconds later. By then, the car is long gone in real time. All in all, it's not too bad seeing that everything does get recorded. However, it does create a problem when you need to pinpoint an exact time frame. After hours of research, I actually discovered that this is a common problem with most MVR systems, including some big brands like Hike Vision and QC. Apparently, for NVR systems, video processing is done on the camera side, then sent to the MVR. Because of this, you get a slight delay, and it kind of explains why the problem kind of shifts between cameras. And sound, regardless of what you do, it will always be out of sync with your videos. But like I said, everything still gets recorded, so it's all good. There is going to be a little lag, uh, but again, the sound is a plus, so most security cameras don't even record sound, so the fact that this one does is awesome. The second issue I have with this unit is freezing. Yes, I said freezing. I don't know if it's because of the MVR or camera. At times the image will freeze for a split second then resume. Every camera does it. I've noticed it's worse with people walking down the street than let's say with cars. I don't want to say it's that it's not a big deal because if this unit freezes when you need it most, you're not going to be pleased with the recording. Because as the unit freezes, it also captures that freeze. At first I hoped to god that the recording would be smooth, but no, freezes are recorded. And uh, I'm pretty sure that it's the NVR, it just doesn't have the processing power to process all the video that it's receiving. So unless I can find a way to upgrade the RAM on this NVR or switch out the NVR completely, I'm going to be stuck with this problem. I did contemplate returning the unit because never had I had this issue on an HD system. But Morningstar accepts no returns and customer support has no idea how to fix it. And the last and final issue I have with this unit is the NVR. 
I don't know where they get these things from, but both NVR had the same issues. For no apparent reason, the unit will go into this restart loop. It restarts, boots up, launches all camera, then reboots once a channel starts recording. It kept doing this for hours until I decided to reinitialize the hard drive. After doing that, the system worked again, but I lost all previous recordings. Now, with the replacement NVR, the rebooting issue was on steroids. I discovered that when we have a thunderstorm, the problem is that it's worse, but reinitializing the hard drive doesn't work. I contacted support, but they never got back to me, and I don't expect them to. What sucks is that contacting them back a second time and having them not get back to me completely undermines my first experience with them, which was somewhat okay. But to be honest, I shouldn't have to contact them back a second time. That's just bad customer service. I've always had the worst luck with RMA replacements. The replacements are always in worse condition than my original. And the MVR is no exception. This MVR is worse than the one I sent them. My original did not reboot like this one. So what about support? Well, at first it took me a while to find out who to contact. On their website, Amcrest has a generic email for support. You supposedly send an email to the support email address and someone will get back to you. However, I waited three days and no one got back to me. I resent the email four times with no luck either. Their support staff uses a popular customer service communication tool called Zendesk. You might have used it once or twice before, so it's relatively easy keeping track of your conversation with them. On their website is a customer service number. I tried the number and got in touch with a guy named Chris. He couldn't help me, but he gave me a different email address to try and contact support again. I did that and I did hear back from someone. They read my email and initiated an RMA for me. However, they didn't have my NVR in stock, so I had to wait two weeks. I also had a bad camera that they also included in the RMA. I sent them my broken equipment and waited about two more weeks before receiving my replacement. Both the camera and NVR had a refurbished sticker on them. Most companies nowadays do this with RMA replacements, so I wasn't surprised, but I was scared because I've had the worst luck with refurbished RMA replacements as mentioned before. Back when I had the T-Mobile Dash, I sent each replacement back for another replacement at least four times. And that was before I upgraded to the Sidekick. The camera worked fine, but I was still having the same latency, freezing, and rebooting issue with the MVR. As mentioned before, the rebooting issue was 10 times worse, and I can't get back in touch with customer service, so I'm stuck with it. So, if you were to ask me if you should purchase this unit, I'd say depends. I paid $350, which is not a bad deal at all. This is what you can expect to pay for a dependable AHD 8 channel 720p, possibly even a 1080p unit. Yes, this unit has a lot of issues, which is why you probably haven't heard of it. But don't forget, it's an MVR unit with power over Ethernet. These systems go for 700 and up. And although I'm completely unhappy with the MVR, the cameras work great. And eventually I plan to make my own NVR unit running Blue Iris on a Core i7 CPU that will have no issues handling these cameras. And don't quote me on this, but I did a little research and stumbled upon a QCAM website that was selling this same unit. There was no mention of Amcrest anywhere, and support was supplied directly by QCAM and not Amcrest. It was almost as if QCAM was a company on their own once upon a time. But then I typed in the URL that I got from the QCAM box, and it took me to Amcrest forward slash QCAM, which was sort of the same site but had the Amcrest branding all over the place. If you ask me, it seems like QCAM was a brand that made NVR cameras but recently got bought by Amcrest. And it makes sense because Amcrest does in fact make their own NVR systems and are in no way associated with the QCAM branding. So I guess they bought over QCAM to create a new category for themselves, which is a budget NVR system made specifically for deal sites like Groupon, Morningstar, and Meh. Because if you try searching for the system to purchase anywhere else, you're not going to find it. I take that back. You might find a used one on Amazon or eBay, but that's it. You're not going to find a new one. So if you're willing to deal with all the bugs and you want to jump on board the latest security camera system, then I think 350 is a fair price to pay given all the issues. 
A couple of articles suggested that purchasing a budget IP security system is much more beneficial than purchasing a really good AHD system for the same price. Reason being because image quality will be better, more features will be present, and you'll be future proofing. And you'll also have the ability to customize, whatever that means. I guess if you want to use a, another software like Blue Iris. If you need something 100% reliable or close to that out of the box, then you might want to look elsewhere. But for residential, this system is not bad. I run daily tests such as locating when the mailman comes or to track when UPS FedEx delivers my packages. And although the system reboots quite often, I'm always able to find the appropriate video. You can go with an AHD, but eventually all security cameras will migrate to Ethernet because of how superior it is compared to coaxial and it's the wave of the future. If you get an AHD and somewhere down the line upgrade, chances are you might need to run Ethernet wires for your new NVR system. But if you already have an NVR system, regardless if it's a budget system, you'll just need to swap out the NVR or cameras or both. I know an electrician in NYC that said when he does a security camera install for a business such as a hospital, it's an MBR system they use. But obviously it's on a much bigger scale than we could possibly imagine. We're talking hundreds of cameras. But thanks for watching, hope that I helped in making an informed decision. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions and thanks for watching.